Billy and Tommy had to study for a Gen Psych 1 exam on Friday, and they both want good grades. Billy has been diligently studying for the exam for the last three days. He's in a quiet place and at a desk, like he will be when he takes the exam. Meanwhile, Tommy has been studying the same material for the past three days. Unlike Billy, he has been studying in a loud, distracted environment, very unlike the classroom. Here we have Billy and Tommy taking their exam. As you can see, Billy is cruising through his while Tommy struggles to remember some of the information. The following Monday, Tommy and Billy got their exams back. Billy was excited to see that he got an A, but Tommy was confused and disappointed when he saw the D on his exam. Why did Billy find it so easy to recall the material and Tommy could not, even though they studied the same material for the same amount of time? Research on context-dependent memory has found that matching learning and testing environments improves recall. Gooden tested scuba divers on a list of words in two settings, on land and underwater. Subjects tested in the environment in which they studied yielded better recall. Billy studied in a quiet, studious environment, which matched the environment in that he took the test. Tommy studied on the couch in his dormitory which is not a studious or a quiet environment, and did not match the testing environment. Aslan found that by simply changing the testing room from the room in which the list was studied, recall was worse than those who studied and tested in the same room. Even familiar smells can help recall. Ball injected lemon and rosemary scents into the learning environment and found that recall was better when rosemary was present in both the learning and testing environment. Mary has a quiz in psychology in a few days. Her task is to list all seven modern perspectives of psychology as well as the parts of a neuron. The test is going to have two or three of the answers filled in as hints. She starts studying two days before her quiz and goes over the list up until the quiz begins at the start of her class. Mary made sure to study in a quiet environment sitting at a desk similar to the environment in which she would be tested. On Monday, Mary received her quiz and noticed that she had incorrectly listed some of the perspectives. She approached her teacher wondering why she had done so poorly when she had done sufficient studying. The teacher asked Mary if she had crammed right before the quiz. Mary said yes and the teacher told her that was the reason for her poor score. Two weeks later, Mary had a quiz in biology. She needed to list all the parts of an animal cell. This time, some, some hints were given as well. Mary spent time studying, but also distracted herself with activities that sparked her imagination. On Friday, Mary stopped studying two hours before her quiz and relaxed listening to some music. When she received her quiz on Monday, Mary was happy to see that she had gotten an A. In a study conducted by Past Otter and Bommel on partless queuing, researchers found that participants who studied a list of items and were given some of those items on the test scored better when they engaged in an internal context-changing activity between studying and being tested. A context-changing activity is something that requires mental imagination, for example, remembering a childhood event. However, if there is no context given on the test, the studies showed that doing an activity like counting or continuing to study improved scores on the test. The previous two examples, along with the studies behind them, support the thesis that matching your testing and learning environments improves recall of the material, which can be useful for studying in school.